Greetings, sunshines and sunnies. It is uh, Queen J. Lotus, Pimp Sun Kiss. Coming at y'all right quick, right fast, maybe, with a royale review for My Wife and Kids. Season 1, episode 10. And I believe after this episode, that will be the end of season 1, child. So we is almost there, Hey, People want to come from everywhere. We almost there. Yes, God. Now, the name of this episode is a little romance so it's gonna be centered around the juxtapositions if you will of michael and jay's marriage versus not really versus but you know in comparison and contrast to michael's brother who is played by damon wayne's actual brother keenan ivory wayne's and michael's brother's girlfriend okay so michael's brother is coming through bringing one of his little girlfriends with him they having a family night merging type thing going on and like i said we're gonna be seeing the differences and the pros and the cons between the two different relationships and now ain't gonna waste no time gonna get right into this review so we open up this episode with jay and michael in the boudoir and they just wrapped up a little hanky panky emphasis on lil Hanky, panky, because both of them are having some discomfort with the fact that the hanky panky is lacking the panky, is <laughs> lacking passion, intimacy, and also quantity as it concerns time. They talking about it was too fast. He was a quick pumper, pumping, pumping, pumping. Okay, and Michael is not feeling the most confident about that. Jay is trying to compensate and boost his head up beyond it but both of them basically just have to agree that their exchanges of mind body and soul <laughs> are missing something and jay is like so what do you think it is what do you think it's giving and or not giving and michael basically says to her like i don't know between you and your job it's got to be one of them so he basically hitting like i think you work too much like i'll be rushing because you in a rush you always got something to do you always got somewhere to be and she said uh, uh, uh. so what you trying to say that this is my fault and honey i feel like it's Meets in the middle because I don't already say it in past reviews. Make sure that you tune in and you all caught up up to this point, okay? Because they all tie in uh, pretty well. They keep the consistency real good while bringing in like new things in each episode. But anywho, I don't already say it that I think Michael is has been having a hard time being attracted to Jay and her working woman energy. Now I can't like detail. I can't explain in a detailed manner why that would be, you know, coming from a man like Michael's perspective, outside of the fact that he has likely been taught and just simply used to, you know, his woman being a certain way. And like I said, he's been taught that his wife should be and move a certain specific way in order to be attractive. And because she's not doing that no more, it's like he's making an adjustment as it concerns his loins. But then, at the same time, I feel like it's possible that Jay is lacking mental and emotional presence because she is having to make adjustments of her own, being a working woman, and still trying to uphold all of her motherly and wifely duties, okay? But in a nutshell, they have hit a rut, like a lot of long-term relationships, long-term marriages do, where they are caught up in a routine, lacking spontaneity, needing to switch some things up, and kind of being so far gone where they don't even know, like, where to start type shit. But I feel like that's, like, kind of the beauty of them having the opportunity to link with another couple, specifically one that is not married, and that is all up into the throes of spontaneity. So it gives them the opportunity to observe and take some notes. And before they wrap up that scene, you know, they was planning to see if they can get some sparks flowing that night. But Jay was like, nah, because you know your brother is coming through and he bringing his little girlfriend. And this one is named Tiara. So that gives us indication that Michael's brother is a playboy. He a little hot in the pot. Okay, he jumped from one to the next. Girls are like buses. One leave, next 15, one coming. That's what it's giving. <laughs> and 
Jason is all talking about, I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't know why he won't just settle down and have a family. And Michael is like, well, maybe he's enjoying the spontaneity of it all. I, okay, I heard that. Because stability is a virtue. At the same time, getting married and having kids, baby, it's work. It's work. And it takes a lot of sacrifices. And one of the main things that people get caught up Sacrificing is the spontaneity, the liberation, the fun, the enjoyment of it all. It all becomes about work, routine, money, protecting, and providing. Too much masculinity and not enough femininity in the equation. Which, child, may also be a, a hindrance in Michael's attraction. There is now too much masculinity in their connection because michael is you know michael is resistant to his feminine traits even though he has feminine traits everybody has feminine traits everybody has masculine traits but he's a bit resistant to his feminine traits and jay is now tapping more into her masculine traits and therefore neglecting her feminine traits so it's a lack of femininity which correlates with flexibility spontaneity and fun and all that shit so yeah moving forward we pick back up in the kitchen with the kids and Junior is eating some cereal out of the box and Katie is watching Claire put together and practice a dance routine. She is going to be in like a talent show competition type thing. So she working on her stuff and Katie said that she liked what she put together. Junior tells her that it's whack and she looked like she being chased by bees. I would more so say that she looked like uh, one of them traffic directors for planes at the airport. <laughs> there was potential, but I wasn't really feeling what she was putting down in that moment either. But it's a work in progress and we're going to let that be. So he ragging on her or whatever. And she is like, look, you just hating because you know that I'm going to win the competition. And he said, all you're going to win is the ugly contest. Oh, <laughs> but Michael come in and it's like, hey, 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 cut all that out. I ain't make not a nail ugly kid. And I must do agree with him. I must do agree. <laughs> so he kissed Claire and he walk over and try to give Junior a hug. And he hopped down up off the counter. He said, yeah, 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 yeah. See, I knew I would get you up off that counter one way or another. Boom. And Katie is like, oh, what about me, daddy? And he said, oh, you're just the cutest four-year-old ever in the world. <laughs> and he starts to get on Junior about talking down to Claire and tells him, I don't want you saying no more negative stuff to your sister like Tom Bat. Negative thoughts bring negative results. And it's facts. Facts. Amongst the fact that him being the oldest and him being a boy, okay, he got some responsibility on his hand. He can't be treating and talking to Claire out any kind of way because that would have an effect on the type of men that she's attracted to and attracts and the things that she may allow in her relationships. Okay, not to mention, it's just good to set up a pattern with them where they are supportive to each other. Like, that can be traumatic that she may feel like anytime she's trying to venture in something, he always talking down to her. And that, you know, ends up causing dissension in their relationships and ends up having a drastic effect on Claire's self-esteem. And now who? He goes on to tell them that dinner is at seven, be there, or catch him eating all their food. <laughs> but Junior is perturbed because he's trying to tell Michael that it is a hot concert that night and michael said baby you can't go because your uncle ken is coming over and he protesting like baby i've been waiting on this all year he said uh-uh well you're gonna miss uncle ken's new girlfriend and now he ready to stay home because <laughs> he want to see the new b of the week okay and he said what's this one name michael said tiara he said can't wait to meet her and jay walks in and it's like baby no mirrors on the shoes where you trying to look up her dress none of that perversion will be allowed and jay starts saying she helped that she know that apartheid isn't a laundry detergent i'm screaming so let me find out that ken was walking around here with a little jillian <laughs> if you know you know from family guy <laughs> unfortunate and michael is asking jay the same thing that i want to know why is you coming down so hard on this girl and you ain't even met her yet and jay says baby i know what types of women he date they beautiful they young and they stupid and Michael said, me and Kyle, that a trifecta. Um, excuse me? 
problematic, problematic, problematic. Okay? That's how folks end up with Me Too movements all on them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stop praying on these quote-unquote dumb girls, okay? Stop it. Stop the madness. Stop the madness. You can be sexually liberated without being stupid, okay? So they got to women too. Stop playing dumb. Stop playing dumb, okay? Use your brain for more than just giving it. You feel me? <laughs> but nah, Jay, I feel like could be accurate in her observation, but I also feel like there's a bit of jealousy going on because she may not be feeling, you know, the most confident about herself, her own looks, and, you know, her sex appeal and all that. And that could also be a discrepancy in their passion and spontaneity because Jay really ain't feeling herself like time out. And she up here projecting her insecurities onto this girl that she ain't even met yet. A miss. But she goes on over to ask Claire if she is ready for her performance the next day. And she says she's got it down. She gonna win, baby. And she said, yes, you give it your all, honey. It ain't all about winning, but you gonna give it your all. And Junior started talking noise, talking about, yeah, it'd be nice for someone else to win something around here. I'm tired of shouldering the family honor myself. Oh, sir. Sir. Didn't they just get up on you? Jay gets on him again. And he starts talking I'm just saying it would be nice for someone else in the family to win something. And Michael says, baby, let me tell you something. Know when a foot is about to beat up your ass. Period. Because <laughs> not to mention, baby, you talking noise. But when you just about to get beat up a couple of episodes ago and Claire had to step in and defend your honor, okay? So she already won something. She won a fight that you lost. Nah. <laughs> Now, Michael is getting ready to head out. He tells everybody to make sure that they are on their best behavior, okay? And as they move throughout the day and in their life, remember that we are leaders and we don't follow. Why? Because nobody knows where they're going. Yes, God. <laughs> That's a word. That's a word, honey. Even though leaders must also know how to follow. It's a time and a place for everything. But... He bids them good days, say he loves them and all that, and heads on out. Now, we flash on to that tonight, and everybody's getting ready for dinner. Ken is there. He whipping up a little something. He letting his girlfriend taste it. He said, it's not too sweet, is it? She said, mm, not as sweet as you. He said, oh, baby, this gonna be for dessert. Give me a kiss. Give me a yeah, yeah. And Jay is hating. Jay is hating. So my uh, Ken, Ken, it sure smells great. What are you cooking? He said he making Calais rotis. And Claire said, that's quail, ain't it? He said, yeah, girl, you've been paying attention in French class. And Michael says, they pepe le pew. <laughs> when did you start cooking quail? Where you shop at? A zoo? <laughs> and Ken says, see, that's your problem. You need to learn that there is more to life than just chicken wings and pig feet. Ooh, burn. <laughs> he said, okay, baby, open your mind. Try some new things. Some stuff you never tried before. And Tiara says, I am. He said, I know you are, girl. And Junior up here with these mirrors on his shoes trying to see up old girl's dress. And Jay kicks the girls out and tells Junior to go change his shoes. And Tiara compliments his shoes. And they, you know, take notice of the reflectors on them. And Jay spills the beans like, honey, he did that so that he can sneak a peek up your dress and see your panties. She said, oh, well, joke's on him, baby, because I don't have nothing on. Oh, hell no. Now look. Inappropriate, inappropriate, inappropriate. Why would you show up somewhere to somebody's family home to have a family dinner with their kids with no drawers on? Then when they tell you what's going on with the young man, with the boy, the minor, you up here announcing that you ain't got no drawers on. Just loud and proud and carrying on. Uh-uh. Red flag. Red. Red flag. Big red flag. She'd have had that. Bitch, boy. She'd have to leave my house at that moment. Mm-mm. Predator alert, predator, predator, predator alert. But Junior gets kicked on out and Ken then kneels down to Katie and asks her if she would like to go to work tomorrow with him at the restaurant. So I suppose he either owns a restaurant or he's a prominent chef at a restaurant. But I'm assuming he owns it. But he tells her that he's going to teach her how to make chocolate mousse. And Katie is excited. And she's talking about he's going to teach her how to make black bullwinkle. <laughs> Girl, cause, oh, you know, moose. <laughs> it didn't click to her that it's, it's not, you know. <laughs> but 
But yes, Katie is excited. And she said that Uncle Ken is the best uncle in the whole wide world. Well, she says the best man. So they got Michael alert. And he said, who gonna help you put your uh, Barbie house together? So then she switched and said, oh, daddy is the best man in the whole wide world. And then Uncle Ken said, well, who bought you the Barbie house? And she said, Uncle Ken is the best man. Then Michael talking about who's gonna smash the whole thing into little pieces. <laughs> Vindictive, toxic. <laughs> so now she is confused galore. But Jay reassures her and says, baby, they wrong. Don't even worry about all that. They just did wrong for even doing you like that. <laughs> now Ken asked for a core and knife. And Jay said, well, you know, we had one at one point, but somebody was using it to dig stuff out of their toes. That is disgusting. And Michael talking about, well, the knife is for jam. This is toe jam. Sir, space jam. The fuck up out of here. But he's talking about he gonna get it for him. Like, uh-uh, you gonna let him use... Something that you've been digging in your toes with for the cook. I don't care how good you clean it. No, of the sorry. It also sounds like you got a habit of that. So now that is yours. That is yours to keep for you and your feet. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, ma'am, no ham, no turkey, no jam, no toe jam, none of that. <laughs> nah. Ken says, that's all right, honey. That's you, you good on that. I got one out in the car. I'm just going to go get it. And Tiara says, no, no, sweetie. That's all right, baby. I'll get it. Well... We can get it together. And he says, ooh, you know how much I like getting it with you. Ooh, I am. <laughs> now, this whole display of passion and jitters is, you know, it's exciting, Michael. He's happy for it. He is here to see it. And all the while, Jay is continuing to be a certified hater. Girl, what is you mad at? She acting like something that they doing is inappropriate. It's really not. It's, it's, it's really not. Not in this case, you know. Now, her talking about the panties and all of that, that was inappropriate. But them just, you know, nicking, being a couple and the kids ain't even in there right now so shit it's just y'all like what, what did you press for you just okay hating straight hating but ken tells him hey we finna run to the cop we're gonna get that knife if i ain't back in 10 minutes stuff the quail <laughs> and he's talking about last one to the car gets a spanking oh <laughs> see spontaneity and again michael is here for rich he is excited about it and it's giving him some ideas you know what i'm saying but Jay, still being a hater, rolling her eyes, stomping her foot, walking on off. Michael goes on over to her like, hey, what do you say? Help me stuff the quail, huh? Help me stuff the quail. And she's talking about, will you stop being silly? He like, I'm not being silly. I'm being spontaneous. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And he rubbing. <laughs> he rubbing some of the uh, sauce or whatever on his mouth. Um, But he done messed around and messed himself up. I'm like, oh, what part of the quail is this? <laughs> Now, real quick on that scene, okay? Talked about them being spontaneous, Ken and Tiara. Talked about Tiara being inappropriate and red flagging. It's up, okay? And stick a pin in the fact that Ken, you know, was inviting Katie to the restaurant and all of that because that's going to cause some other subjects to come up. Mm -hmm. Talked about Jay being a hater. And I'm going to go deeper into jay and her hater ray y'all need spontane spontaneity okay y'all need spontaneity you want you know more passion in the relationship and in the intimacy and all that and instead of you catching the flash and taking inspiration the way michael is you up here being resistant talking about who's not being silly girl loosen up where's your sense of humor where is your flexibility why you acting like that? Okay. So I just feel like her acting like that is just giving further indication that she is lacking confidence. Her self-esteem is in a compromised position to a point where she can't receive her sexy being welcomed and embraced like Tom Mm-hmm. We're gonna keep an eye on that. But now we're gonna transition on to the next scene. Well, everybody is gathered in the living room, and Michael is introducing the lovely. The talented Miss Claire Cow. And she gonna work it out. Showing what she been working on for her dance competition. She come on down with these outfits, baby. I'm gonna have to do like a um a fashion review type shit for Claire's outfits. Because I feel like she had a lot of really cute age appropriate outfits. A little black poly pocket out here. Yeah. So she got on this like um bejeweled belt. Round some cute camo pants, a green bedazzled tank. Okay, she's sparkling and camouflaged H2T. H2T. 
and we love to see it. And she hitting that thing. She jacking it. Uh, boom, cat, boom, cat, popping and locking it. This is a much better routine than earlier, okay? But then she started hitting the tussie roll. She started popping that thing and whirling it all around and dropping it like it's hot. And Katie gets up and catches the flash. Jay is shocked and a nigga named Paul. Michael is not having it. <laughs> he puts a halt to that with a quickness. And I don't think it was that bad, but <laughs> I understand the concern. <laughs> Clarence like, I'm not done yet. Don't you like it? He said, yeah, I love it. You was working it, doing your thing. Then you just started popping it, popping it, popping it. And it was a little disturbing for me, honey. It was a little disturbing for me as your father. And she said, baby, you got to get with the time. People like to shake it fast. Show what you're working with. Ow. Watch yourself. <laughs> and he said, yeah, honey, we used to shake it fast too, but we didn't shake it all. You see, just hit a little bump. You remember the bump? Okay, she said, yeah, honey, that's what I'm talking about. That's Jay. Say, baby, that's what I'm talking about. Work it out, child. They start doing the bump. Freeze on it. Put the squeeze on it. Tierra jump up and she started doing the bump with him. Taking it down to the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ken is rooting them on. They having a good old funky time. And Jay said, oh, no. Oh, no. That show is over. Cut. Put on quite a show. Very entertaining. But it's over now. <laughs> Now, let me clock that tea real quick, right fast. Like I said, like I said, Claire's routine, it wasn't that bad. I understand how her daddy, you know, as her daddy, could have some concerns, especially when little Katie gets up and starts joining in, okay? We do need to make sure, though, that we are also being educated and competent in the fact that twerking and popping, you know, all that is cultural. It can be done with sexual or sensual intent but it is not inherently a sexual dance it is a african dance just to put it in simple terms okay it is of our culture it is nothing to be ashamed of or to shame about okay all the while i understand michael's concern i also gotta call him on the bullshit talking about oh yeah we used to shake it fast too but we didn't shake it all first of all Claire hit a smooth tootsie roll, which is before her time, okay? That dance was before her time. That dance was before my time, okay? That's an old dance. So what is she talking about? And I done seen some old videos from back in the day, okay? In the club. Freak Nick, uncut, okay? <laughs> Baby, I done seen, you know, the old videos, old back in the day, 60s, 70s type, where it was a whole lot of dry humping going on, Okay? When we get into talking about Ma Rainey and her black bottom, and that's way, way, way on back, baby, shaking it fast. And wasn't watching none of they sales, just, just watching that booty do what it do. All right? All right. Not to mention, like I said, twerking is a ancient African dance. So, uh, yeah. Stop the madness. Tell me that. We didn't shake it all. Oh, baby, y'all did more than the bump. Okay? Way more than the bump. Stop that line. Ratchet now. Now, Jay in this scene, <laughs> when old girl gets up and starts dancing with Michael, um, I'm kind of with her on that. Now, it does point to the fact that, girl, you're insecure. You know, that's your husband. You know, you ain't got to worry about that. Like, they right there. They just having a good time. They're just doing a little bump. But because there are some reasonable insecurities in their relationship as it concerns their sex life and spontaneity and the enjoyment of it all, I understand why she feel like that because a girl go, go ahead and back, back it up. Back it up, okay? Because I don't need y'all getting too excited over here. That ain't the type of spontaneity we need. <laughs> so, Jay says to Tiara, hey, why don't you come in the kitchen with me and help me, you know, wrap up some of these dishes? And Tiara is like, hey... Don't miss me too much while I'm gone, baby. <laughs> they go on into the kitchen and get to cleaning some things up. And that gives Michael and Ken the opportunity to have a little one-on-one -on -one time talking about the things. And Michael said, baby, what is that like? Ken said, I feel like Hugh Hefner that just discovered Viagra. And they dapping it up and all of that. Ken said, I tell you, I tell you, these young girls, honey, take. <laughs> they stories a whole lot shorter 
And he said, tell me about it. All Jay want to do is talk and talk and talk some more. They end up talking themselves right into an argument. You guys probably never fight, huh? Ken said, nah, we fight all the time. I call it foreplay because it just ends right on up to, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and Michael said, yeah, to court. <laughs> That's hell. But Michael said, you know, Jay keeps talking about spontaneity in the relationship, but he don't know what it means. Honestly, I think Michael has a better understanding of what it means than Jay. Because Jay is saying that she wants more spontaneity, but she is acting very rigid. Because <laughs> when Michael keeps trying to, you know, make these free ball attempts, she's like, uh, uh, quit playing, uh, move, uh. <laughs> but Ken explains to him, he's just talking about, she just talking about something that she's not expecting. And Michael talking about, you mean like not pay the mortgage, not pay the mortgage? And Ken says, no, you remember the other night when it was pouring down raining? Me and T.R. went outside, danced naked in the lawn, started singing, mm-hmm, worked it right on down to hitting notes that Prince couldn't even reach. Honey, <laughs> he snapped. Yes, he is given a sense of liberation that jay and michael have lost sight of they're stuck in all of the obligatory things and have lost sight of desire which is why i also feel like jay is jealous of tiara and why she keep making the dumb jokes and stuff like that because a lot of the time people can simply be liberated just outside of you know the girl might actually be dumb or whatever anyway i don't think she's dumb i do think she's inappropriate in certain cases but yeah let me just say what i'm gonna say okay Sometimes really smart people are jealous of people that they perceive as stupid because they perceive that naivete, if you will, as a form of liberation because they take it like you don't care about thinking. You don't care about responsibility. So you just over there living young, wild and free. Hmm. But me over here is smart as fuck. And I know so much and it's just more shit for me to care about and feel responsible for. And I listen to that in the third imprisoning themselves into a box of obligation and that ain't no fun not to mention jay was a teen mom so she really lost out on quite a bit of her childhood her younger years her 20s all of that and she looking at tiara up here young wild and free ain't got no kids ain't got all of them responsibilities and obligations to be in prison to like talking about so jay is really hating on that sense of liberation mm-hmm Tisk. Now we get like a time lapse uh, into uh, Ken and Michael still just, you know, jonesing and conversing and having drinks and such. They drinking that brown liquor. <laughs> just chopping it up. He ha ha and kiki and shit. And Tiara comes downstairs in her negligee. Okay. Hair still late. Flashing her eyes. Grinning and skinny. And she's like, baby, when you gonna come to bed, huh? And Ken say, just keep the side of the bed that I lay on warm for me, darling. I'll be up there soon enough. Mm-hmm. And they both gawking at her like, yeah, ow. And then she walk on up and they like deafen each other up. And I just say, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, J.D. comes down. Hair rag on. Face mask on. Frumpy pajamas. Talking about, Michael, when you coming to bed? And he was like, in about an hour. She said, I'm going to be sleeping out in. He like, yeah, probably. So she just kind of storm off and shit, and it's just like, yeah, see, it, it points to another issue. It's like, obligatory shit. She's not being spontaneous herself. She's, you know, you want to be comfortable, but sometimes you just need to doll yourself up just for the hell of it. Just to give your man something real nice to look at, you know? People want to know that their mate will spruce themselves up just for their eyes sometimes, you know? And seem like Jay has lost sight of that. And I do feel like a lot of this has a lot to do with the fact that they didn't, re they didn't really get to enjoy um, their younger years like that. They had to grow up fast because they had kids young and got married young and all of that. So they're having to um, not do a lot of self-discovery at the last minute, kind of, you know, for lack of better terms. I must also point out, too, that jay is whiny and has been quite whiny like she came downstairs whining and that ain't sexy like there's a way that you can do it in a sensual manner but don't nobody want to hear that shit all the time so michael is turned off by that shit he ain't trying to fuck with that shit. Like, you know damn girl please your wonder bra or something put on some booty shorts and 
Shake a little something for her. Give a little leg. Take it back. Give a little shoulder. Take it back. <laughs> Now, we get upstairs with Michael and Jay, they laying in the bed, and he like, hey, you wanna? And she say, if you wanna, he said, I wanna if you wanna. She said, well, we're not gonna if you just keep saying you wanna. He said, then I'm gonna. <laughs> well, he asked her to take her headscarf off, and under the headscarf, child, she got on a bonnet. Why you got a headscarf on top of the bonnet? <laughs> but he want her to take that out, too. And she ain't trying to, so they about to get into it. But then Katie walks in and is like, she can't sleep because there's so much noise coming from Uncle Ken's room. And Michael tells her it's just that when he eat that quail, he get real silly. And Jay saying, and then they close the door and they have a pillow fight. That's all they doing. They in there just pillow fight. And Michael said, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they be in there just making noise. It's all why they pillow fight. And whoever starts making the noise first, they get hit with more pillows. And Katie said, I'm glad that you and mommy don't have no pillow fights. <laughs> <laughs> oh child and then michael says well we would have some pillow fights if she take the jiffy pop thing off her head <laughs> if she take the jiffy pop thing off her head <laughs> baby that is hilarious that tickled me <laughs> and i know some men um like the bonnet now it, it kind of depends on the style of the bonnet too but jay bonnet is kind of ugly it's like one of them grandma type bonnets it got a little shimmer to it, but it ain't all that cute. And he probably see her in that bunny like all the time. So he want her to switch it up. And she just being stubborn, honey. Now it's the next morning and Jay is getting Katie ready for school. And she brushing her hair and all this and that in the third. Tiara is pinching her cheeks all cute and things. And Ken walks over. He's like, hey, where Mike? I want to say goodbye to him before we left. And Jay tells him when he's still in the bed, he didn't get much sleep because of y'all's pillow fight last night. And Ken is like, oh, my bad. And he picks up Katie and he said, you ready to go to work with me? And they're going to make some cookies all day long. And they head on out, which I'll see. I, I think I said that she was getting ready to go to school, but now she's getting ready to go with Ken to work. Because, yeah, he promised that he would take her to work with him, show her how to bake some sweets and stuff. So, yeah, they head on out, bid Jay farewell and all that. Tiara turns around and tells Jay, you know, thank you for inviting me. It was really cool. I feel like I'm part of the family now. <laughs> and Jay runs off and it's like, everybody's going now, Michael. Everybody's going, honey. It is raining and storming and carrying on all outside. And Rosa, the nanny, comes into the house. And she goes on over to the window because she hears some noise out there in a commotion. And it's, J it's Michael outside the window singing and whirling his tush around taking his clothes off out in the rain trying to get his spontaneity on he's singing let's get it on and he think rosa is jay of course because he can't really see clearly he just see a light-skinned lady peeking out the window <laughs> and jay comes back in and she said have you seen michael she said well yes i have <laughs> she looked back over her shoulder and he all out there just a dutty whining honey just a singing now and jay walks over to the window look out there and like oh my gosh but a dog then came and then ran off with michael's pants Woo, child he tried oh my goodness he really tried like he really has been trying <laughs> To no avail. And now he probably finna have a cold for no reason. <laughs> a fool, a shame, and a scandal, child. <laughs> and Rosa a real one because, you know, in a lot of situations, that's probably a little bit of how the nannies and the husbands end up getting into the hunky punky. Which, I ain't saying it's right. I'm just saying it probably how sometimes it end up happening. Okay, the husband trying to do something spontaneous for the wife and the nanny show up instead and then it's like, oh, well, I mean, <laughs> don't mind if I do. <laughs> yes. But shout out to Rosa for being an honest woman. Straight up. Even though Michael probably wouldn't have gave her no play, but y'all, mm -mm. when things get vulnerable, you never know what might happen. But anywho, it ain't happened. Shout out to them. <laughs> now, in the next scene, they coming home from Claire's talent competition and she got egg on her face, honey, pouty lip to full capacity. And they telling her, listen, second place is not bad. So she didn't like win win like she thought she would. She got second place. And she felt like it's still losing. Jay said, whether you win or not is how you play the game. And she said, uh uh, is that what you tell your clients on the stock market? Oh. 
fired her up, Roy. Fired her on up. <sighs> but Michael said, look, just give us some time. And he's sneezing. I told you. I told you. And Jay said, see, that's what you get around running around. That's what you get for running around in the rain. Bucket naked. He said, that ain't what he was expecting to get. Nah, that ain't what he was expecting to get. Don't be, don't be fussing at that man because you should have been where you were supposed to be. <laughs> he was trying to get a little piece of you. Hell. Now he around here yelling, I chew. You ain't even say blessing. Mm. Trifling. <laughs> Next scene, Claire's upstairs in her room, sulking, and Julia walks in and says, look, I feel responsible. Like, maybe it was my fault that you didn't win. And Claire says, no, it was my fault. She just wanted it too bad. Mm. Uh, Julia said, look, it's just a stupid dance contest. Claire said, baby, you got trophies, basketball, baseball, soccer. He's like, come on, baby, you got these trophies over here. Like, what about this? You got this right here, this right here. She said, baby, two of them are for attendance. One is a consolation prize, and the one on the right is an award for being a good loser. Oh, man. Yeah, that's cold. He said, but you really are a really great dancer. I mean, look at me. I got two left feet. Watch this. And it's going to be the only time you see it. So he's the, oh my gosh. She hits the running man and he like flapping his arms and carrying the child. It is a mess. It is a fool. It is a shame. <laughs> Literally look like he almost fell a couple of times. Child tisk. <laughs> but they put a smile on her face, gets her to laughing. And he tells her that he really feels like she should have won. Like he feel like that for real. Because she was asking him, did they daddy put him up to that? He's like, nah, like, I really feel like you had what it takes to get first place. Oh, girl, only beat you because she got a whole lot of booty. <laughs> and, child, it do be like that sometimes. Sometimes the person that win don't even win, you know, for what they supposed to be winning for. It just be some more going on. Honey, distractions. But I really appreciate that scene because Junior really showed, you know, some contrast there, some maturity and some genuine love and vulnerability to his sister like it seems as though it became clear to him like yeah like if i had a maybe if i had a given her more encouragement then her um performance may have come off more confident and less like you know you trying hard it's a little hard to explain but sometimes it's an essence that you giving off and it kind of meets in the middle of what both of them were saying. Like Claire said that she felt like she just wanted it too bad. And it can put you in this essence of desperation. And sometimes that can be the essence that the judges pick up on and be like, eh, it's, you know, the choreography and all of that is good. But your essence is not transferring in a enjoyable way. Hmm. Much like Jay and Michael's sex life in a way where they're doing the thing, but they trying too hard so the transfer is not enjoyable it's a bit robotic you know that's why sometimes you can see people doing things like especially on social media you can look at one post and there's clearly so much cre creativity there's clearly so much time that the person put into their post and all of it but it only get like one or two likes and then you see somebody else post this super simple straight to the point all of that and that post got 50,000 likes and it don't even have even half the creativity is the other posts sometimes it's because it's a different level of confidence that's coming off you can do something simple and lackluster but you do it confidently and that really transfers to people there could be other things that go into that too but just simply stated on what we're speaking on now yeah confidence radiating confidence exchanging and transferring the essence of confidence but yeah chat i'll let you say junior probably feel like if he had a poured into her more then he could have helped her radiate that natural confidence and not come off so much like she's trying so hard robotic whatever what have you now later that night they having dinner and ken comes in with katie and she said mommy daddy i made you some cookies they said where are they she said i ate them all <laughs> she said no you did not see something right there give it to me yeah 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 kissing all over her face Yes, and they asked, where's Ciara? Because she did leave with them that morning, honey. And he said, I don't know. We broke up. What you mean? What you mean? What? It, like, it was literally just all good in the hood, and now she ain't nowhere to be found? <sighs> mm -mm -mm. But, honey, Michael is shocked at a nigga named Paul. And he like, what? You What? And Jay looking at him like, uh, oh, you a little too passionate. But he say, I mean, uh, uh, tisk, tisk. That's, that's too bad. <laughs> and he says to 
Ken, why don't you meet me in the room real talk about it so I can show you my shreds. Now, I, I don't know what he's talking about. But he said, like, Ken don't know what he's talking about either. He said, what? My talking about the, the Zootinator. Huh? Because <laughs> Ken is confused. But Jay tells him, he just, he just want to get the dirt up off of you about just the situation, honey. He just trying to get the tea. <laughs> now, him and Ken walking on up out the kitchen. And Micah says, how could you break up with that girl? She was perfect. And Ken is like, the grass ain't always green, honey. The grass is always greener. You know, they're saying all of that. And Micah said, baby, the grass wasn't just green. That was Ireland. You know, from your vantage point, it may seem like that. But I think you was missing a couple of red flags, honey. And Ken basically says, all she wanted to do was have sex. And then afterwards, ain't nothing to talk about. And Michael says, and? And Ken is like, baby, I'm tired of being some woman's love monkey. He with a different woman every night, you know? It's like, you know the champagne bath is cool, the hot oil massages, but sometimes a brother just want to hook. You know what I mean? And Mike's like, nah. No, love monkey. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> but y'all, Ken Page are beeping. Some girl named Topaz. <laughs> but Mike is like, dude, give me the dirt. What happened? What happened with you and Tiana? He say that the girl had a fit because she wanted to spend time with Katie. And he honestly was having more time with Katie than Tiara. And Katie is also a better speller. And he just like, you know, <laughs> hold on, we ain't gonna just bypass the fact that he said Katie is a better speller than this grown ass lady. So... Jay was right that the girl is <laughs> not smart. Ah, even though Jay is still a hater, she was right that the girl is dumber than two nickels. Uh-uh. But he just feel like he getting older and it's time for him to settle down and have some kids. Michael tell him take Junior. <laughs> he said he'll trade him in a minute. And Michael tell him, give me your beeper. No, man. But Ken uh, tell him, seriously, man, you and Jay got some really good shit going on. And Michael says she loves me unconditionally, but things have gotten so routine lately. Ain't no spark in their sex life. It used to be like halftime at Grambling, you know, with a marching band, fireworks. Now it's like some old dude with a bass holding a match. Damn. Damn. But Ken says, you can't have it all. Take out that people. It's beeping. He's talking about, uh-uh, that's Diamond and Ruby. Wait a minute. <laughs> he got to bounce. And Mike was like, wait a minute. I thought you said you can't have it all. Ken said, uh-uh, I said, you can't have it all. <laughs> I got to shake my thing. Shake it, shake it. Uh-uh, uh-uh. A mess. A mess. But he basically telling Mike he can't have it all because he married. <laughs> I mean, they could come to some agreements, maybe. I... <laughs> Jay ain't having that child. She is not having that. But I get what Ken was saying because he can still, you know, be a playboy. But that's what I was saying earlier. Stop messing with them stupid girls. Just because they smart don't mean they, they can't be fun, too. Okay, he wants somebody that can um, enjoy the simple things with him as well as have some deep, meaningful conversations. You need balance, balance, balance. You want somebody that can stimulate your mind and your loins and stimulate your loins by way of your mind. Okay, sex is physical, but it ain't all physical. Sex is very mental, emotional and spiritual. And remember I said, keep in mind that him taking Katie with him to work was going to bring up some more shat. Yeah, that was the shat. Another red flag of this girl being jealous of a toddler. So she telling teenage boys that she ain't got no panties on. And then she jealous of little toddler girls that just want to spend time with their uncle. See, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah, Tiara needed to get the fuck on. Now, later that night... Um, Michael is in bed, sick, of course, because he was out there in the rain. And Katie takes him some soup, okay, that she made. She said she put a prize in it. It's some little, little nasty toy. <laughs> Michael asked her, did you get this water out the toilet like last time? She said, no, silly. I got it out the fish tank. Mm-mm. He spit that clean out. And I do not blame him. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Me and Katie would have to have a stern talking too. <laughs> but he said to the side. He said, I'm going to finish this later, okay? She said, no, I want you to finish it now because I want you to feel better. And he said, look, you come back in the morning and it'll be all gone. Okay? You now, you go to sleep now. And she said, I will. And he started whining and caring. Also, he can get a little kiss on the cheek or whatever. Just a little, little, little daughter, little sugar. And he said, good night, Applehead. So cute. So cute. I love those little scenes with him. The child, Jay done got in her bag. 
Jay done got in her bag and she stepped in with this naughty nurse outfit on and she said, is there a sick little boy in the room? He said, yeah. She said, uh-huh, well, I'm Nurse Jay. He said, hi, Nurse Jay. She said, do you like candy? He said, mm-hmm, that's nice. She said, well, if you be a good boy, I give you a lollipop. Ooh. Ooh. He said, you gonna give me some medicine and make me all better? She said, mm-hmm, I sure am. But first, I'm gonna need to take your temperature. He said, oh, hell no. Because <laughs> she pull out this big long thermometer. <laughs> And you know where that goes. Ah! Uh, um, mm mm. Trying to get up in a rooter tooter. No, no, no. So he starts scurrying <laughs> all across the bed, and honey, she gets to chasing him. This is the spontaneity. And that was the end. <laughs> so I love that she finally snapped into a Slim Jim. That was a cute little nurse outfit, too. Shawty looked good, honey. She was doing the same. Now I must do point out. Dad, he was gonna need to wash his mouth out because he just had fishbowl water in his mouth by way of Katie. <laughs> I forget, <laughs> I did not forget, okay. But maybe Jay will be okay with this. <laughs> I would not, I'm gonna have to, boy, I'm gonna double as a dentist and brush them teeth first. <laughs> But that was a great, funny, fun episode. I love the values that it implemented. And like I said, the juxtaposition that they showed between the two different types of relationships and the pros and cons of both. And Loki Haki made it clear in certain ways, even though Ken left off, I'm like, you can't have it all. <laughs> even though Michael ended up getting his spontaneity at the end. They ended up catching the drift, okay? Catching the flash, getting it right, shaking that ass, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's showing that you need balance, okay? Everything can't be obligatory and uh, mundane and routine all the time. You got to spice it up. You guys, and, and both people have to be willing and able to spice it up. Because we thought Mike was trying the whole time to like try all these different little things. And Jay was being weird. But she finally got it right at the end. And so Michael's um, little dance in the rain did not go in vain <laughs> as it landed him sick in the bed to be attended to by naughty nurse j <laughs> this also showed how you can't like um hyper glorify other people's relationships or you know do too much comparing of your relationship to other people's because you could just be seeing all of the good things in their relationship that you feel like yours lacks and therefore not giving yourself credit for what you have and losing sight of what's important because the relationship that you are over glorifying may not be oh so perfect you see tr was in and up out of there you know so it was nothing to be jealous of in the first place all the while they did need and ended up taking some inspiration from their relationship nonetheless and I feel like Ken also took some notes and clues and inspiration from Michael and Jay's relationship as it concerns him having a desire to at least form more bonds that have better bases and that aren't just sex. He may not ever get married and have kids and all that, but now he at least has a need and the desire to seek out more stable-minded women that may still have that sexual liberation vibe but can also hold a conversation all at the same time. And that ain't gonna be jealous of toddlers and be telling teenage boys when they ain't got no panties on. And like I said, it parallels um, with the theme of confidence where Jay's confidence was compromised and the whole lack of confidence in the sex life was compromising Michael's confidence and boiling down to Claire and her dealing with confidence as it concerns, you know, her identity, who she is, and the things that she's good at, and trying to be victorious in something. And we got to see her and Junior have their whole spiel of, basically for the most part, Junior realizing a value and a responsibility of pouring into his sister more and feeding her pride feeding her confidence levels and not just ragging on her all the time he learned the error of his ways and you know a power that he has in their relationship 
And instead of him continuing to abuse it, he decided to level the fields and go give her some words of encouragement and take accountability for the part he played in tearing her down all the way up into the competition. So yeah, gowns, gowns, beautiful gowns, <laughs> beautiful things. And honey, with all that being said, child, if I do say so myself, darling, I have milked this cow right. And I'm thoroughly appreciative for the exchange of vibes. And if you're feeling synchronized, please do me a divine design and like, share, and subscribe. So that you can be one of the first to be back through these queenly quotes for the next time. And be sure to bless my comment section with your questions and conversations. And as always, I bid you in all ways like love, healing, and liberation. Emphasis on liberation. Mwah.